today we've got the 2021 Mercedes-Benz AMG E53. So if we take a look at the front of this E53, you'll see these headlights. Now these headlights have 84 individual LEDs that can bend and curve the light. But take a look at this daytime running lamp. It's nice and clean. And even on the side, it says multi-beam LED. And they've got these blue little filters on the side that make it look nice and crisp. And even this amber lighting, I'm not a big fan of amber lighting, but that's a nice, clean, bright touch they have on these lights. Now on the front, they've made it refined and they've put a AMG grill in its nice vertical stripes here. It obviously does have this lower valence that's nice and flat and curved up above it. Beautiful inlets on the side that obviously on this side don't have any function and on this side, yep, no function. Just on the front. And you wonder why it has no function because this is a performance E55 AMG, it should have. But maybe they're countering that with this nice big bulge which they call the power dome. And like we talked about on the other Mercedes-Benz products, this has two badges, just to let everybody know that you're driving a Mercedes-Benz. One right here, and then obviously this big monster here where it is hiding all your radar sensors right behind it. And if you take a close look, they actually have it heated because they want everybody to know that it is a Mercedes-Benz. So what makes this car different? And this is the reason, it's just not a detuned version of the bigger boy. No, this thing is the first car we've ever had on this channel, matter of fact, the only car I can ever think of, that is triple boosted. Yes, it has three compressors, two are attached to the engine and one is electric. Yes, it has an electric compressor that adds 21 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. So the engine actually makes 439 horsepower and 384 pound-feet of torque, but it has an electric compressor that you can use, well obviously it just steps in and steps out, but it helps you push the car. That propels this beast to 60 in four and a half seconds. Some people have done it in 4.2 seconds, and forget about all you tuners out there, but yes, that is pretty cool, and yes, it is also 4 -matic. That is nice to see a nice big AMG over there and it does have, which sounds crazy, but it gets me excited, is the fact that it's got dual struts. So you've got dual struts for this engine bay and yes, you have two mounts. That is important as opposed to a center mount. And also this does have a nine speed gearbox and it doesn't have any nine speed gearbox. This has a nine speed triple clutch gearbox. You're feeling the triple deal here. So what does this compete against? This competes against an Audi S7. And the Audi S7 makes 444 horsepower and it does zero to 60 in the same time, except it doesn't look as good. The A7 is more like plain looking, kind of like that thing over there. The front of that Jag looks pretty aggressive, but the side is pretty plain looking and the back is definitely plain looking. And that is what the S7 is to me. This thing is more aggressive. The Benz is definitely more aggressive. And also, this thing is exciting. So moving along the side here, you will see these have 20 inch wheels and Mercedes-Benz claims that they are aerodynamically optimized. Now take a look at this, and this is really funny to see. They are because they have a lip. Like I can get my finger behind this, there's a lip right behind the actual wheel. I haven't really seen many manufacturers that do this. It's kind of cool, kind of interesting, and I do like the fact it's flat black and it looks kind of cool, a nice fancy Mercedes-Benz star. But behind it you have the AMG calipers, they are cross-drilled. But here at Accelerate, we like to test the inner fender liners to see if they're carpeted or plastic. In this specific case, they are plastic all the way through. They do have some venting for some brake cooling, and yes, this is air suspension. Now, quick thing about the air suspension, it does have two valves in it, one for compression and one for rebound rate. So you can adjust to see how bouncy or stiff you'd like it to be when you're in the car. So yes, it does have air suspension, something the Audi S7 does not have. Now, moving along the side here, it does have proximity key, so key in your pocket, walk up to the car, touch the handle, you can unlock or lock, push the lights here and you can lock it. Yes, these are smaller sort of side mirrors. They're not as large as the Audis. They're definitely smaller and tighter. You think on a car so long, this is 116 inches, which is sort of 
mid-size, mid-ish size, just like that XF, that's 117. This is 116, so it tells you the size of the car. But let's check a few things. One is let's check how the door closes. Let's do the exact same thing in this Jaguar here. This part here definitely feels a lot less quality than this. This feels really good quality. There's no doubt. How about the back doors? Yeah, pretty good. Better than, I'd say the back doors of this Benz feel a little bit better than the front doors of the Jag, if that's saying something. Now on the back here, yes, they have put carpeted fender liners on the back. Interesting how they have plastic in the front and carpet in the back. Another thing to note about this car is the 4Matic Plus. You see the 4Matic Plus has 50-50, so it transfers 50% of the power to the front and 50% of power to the back, except when you're in certain modes or you want all the power to the back, you can transfer 100% of the power right to these back wheels, which are pretty awesome. Uh, but one thing before I forget, the Audi S7 has all we a rear wheel steering, but this one, you can't get it. So there's something to consider. So something really interesting about this specific E53, and that is the RPM. You see the RPM in this car, when you start it, you don't even know you start it. It's so fast, and that has to do obviously with the electric component of the vehicle. But what is crazy is the RPM level that it sits at. It sits at about 520 RPMs. Now most cars that we're used to, revs at about 800, 850, 900, usually under 1000 RPM. This thing is so quiet when you start it, you don't even know it's running. It's so like Lexus-like, but this is supposed to be a performance sedan with this AMG badge in the back. And speaking of this AMG badge, let's go to the back and check it out. This does have LED taillights, as you see here. And again, it does have a bit of chrome on the back here and obviously the three-pointed star. It does have E53 on the side and moving down, you will see this black lower valence. Now, something interesting, we just did that Jaguar review and the Jaguar actually has a bend in it. This is really flat. This rear diffuser is flat and it's kind of thick and aggressive that you don't really notice the fact that these have dual, sport, dual exhaust, but they are just tips and they're not part of the exhaust. Like, take a look. You can get them in chrome like they are here or in black. So I really like to call them the hey bro exhaust. Like, hey bro, check out my exhaust because they're not really exhaust. So now we will open this trunk and you will see on the trunk itself, it does have this little nice spoiler. This is a nice, clean, elegant spoiler. So I really like that spoiler and it's very rounded so I can tell we're going to have a decent amount of trunk room. Now in order to pop the trunk, this is powered. So when I pop it, you will see that it goes right up. But in between that, you will see that I actually have a camera hiding underneath here. When you put the car in reverse, that camera pops down so you can see it. Now it has two buttons here, one to obviously close the trunk and the one next to it is if you have your hands full of shopping bags, well, you just hit this button, it'll lock all the doors and then the trunk will close. Now inside the cabin, inside the uh, trunk here, you do have hangers for your shopping bags like you do have in the Jag that we reviewed earlier. Also, you pull these guys down and the seats fold down. But let's talk about depth and room. So now that we have a competitor right there, we can tell you what this is. This is 45 inches. Now in the Jag, it was about 48 if I remembered correctly. So that's another two and a half inches deeper in the Jag, but really tight back seats. And then in terms of width here, you have 45. That's pretty much the same as the Jag. And in the Jag, if I remember correctly, it was 18. And this one has an entry point of 23. So it's definitely higher and a little bit shorter in terms of depth, but it's definitely more usable, I think, than the Jag if it's, if you're asking me. Now the back seats of the AMG 53. So a few things. One is the Basically the soundproof rubber they use around the car is very soft on this side and then kind of hard and rough on this side, which is different. I usually find them both exactly the same. And the other thing is when they have the outside trim molding here, it's very sharp. Like it's very sharp. Not really complaining, just letting you know. Let's jump into this back seat of the 53 and oh, see that's the difference. German cars, man. Just like super easy door handle, like literally little thingy pinky i mean it's just so light and easy but then when you close it it's like it's like a good feels great see that's the good stuff maybe that's why it cuts you on the outside and has rough molding who knows black headliner dual sunroof large i'd say it's probably one and a half times larger in the front than this guy in the back but it makes you feel like open airy nice contoured back seats i like how they've put suede and leathers and piping in the back here so the same beef I had with the Jaguar, these seats actually don't fold down from the inside. So 
if you want to pop the seats down, you actually have to do it from the trunk. There's no way to put these seats, the outer two, from the back here. You can put the center down. So obviously here's your cup holders, one on each side, nice and clean, better than the Audis. And then here you have some sort of console there. It used to come with a first aid kit, but you know, the world's got cheap. Uh, push the button down here and this folds down pretty nice, pretty straightforward. So you do have a pass through. But again, if you put these seats down on both sides, you have to do it from the trunk. That's the only beef I have. Really, really nice ambient lighting. Like Mercedes Benz does one of the best ambient lighting. So in the back here, you still feel like you're part of the ambient lighting. You don't get like this little strip. You got a nice long strip. This one does have stitching all the way around in red. And obviously the Burmeister speakers, they're nice and clean. It does have your heated seats in the back here on either side, not in the center. And it does have a blank button, which I assume at some point would have been air conditioning seats, but can't get them. Now on the back here, it does have a nice piece as a travel. So you can put your magazines or whatever you want to read, because if you want to use a USB C's, there are two of them hiding down here and a voltage output. Now I will say, if you want to put your USB C in there, you kind of have to put like, it's kind of cheap quality. If you ask me, because if you want to put your USB C into this, you put it in, but then the tray slides upward. If you push it down, you feel like you're going to break it. So that's probably a lot of, you know, broken USB-C covers back here. Don't ask me, ask Mercedes Benz maintenance. So something I saw pretty common with Audi customers where they were always complaining the fact that in the middle of the seat, it would have a pretty high sort of axle sort of shaft. So there's no flat floor. It obviously has the bump right in the middle. And people with Audis would always complain that they're too high. But in this Mercedes Benz, I would also say it is the same. It is also very high. It's sort of designed to be a four seater and the center sort of seat is just really like an emergency seat because even everything here is contoured to two passengers and not three, even though there is a seat belt and there is, you know, a headrest. Let's go to the front. Do you see that? Yes. I'm the front of the E53 and it does tell you if there's something coming there to be careful with the door. So that basically is like a safety feature. But welcome to Club AMG where the ambient lighting is in full effect. You got 64 versions of ambient lighting and COVID's kept me trapped and there's been no nightclubs open, but thank God I got my AMG E53 because inside this thing is beautiful. I really like the interior of Benz's. Now people say Audi has the best interior, but maybe Audi has the best like formed interior. But in terms of like feeling alive and feeling like your money spent in something fun and exciting and quality, you know, maybe the quality is a little bit better than the Audi, but I don't know. It's a really tough, tough thing because the tech just over dominates everything in here. Take the steering wheel, for example, it's a three spoke steering wheel with pretty awesome shifters, which in this nine speed triple clutch gearbox, I'm definitely going to use. But let's talk about this AMG drive unit. So underneath they have this in the Audi R8 where you can adjust different performance settings. And this is exactly the same. Now you have, you can do adjustments down here by pressing quick buttons, but on the steering wheel now you have this optional dual dials here where you see, so I can basically push the top and the bottom and adjust different modes. So I have my start and stop. I have my AMG dynamics. I have my stability program and then my suspension settings and then my exhaust settings. So I can either toggle from the top or the bottom, but then if I want to adjust different versions of them, there's these little click buttons behind it to go to basic pro advanced. And then underneath that, I've got start and stop. I can shut it off and yeah. So just you get a lot of customizing happening with these little buttons on the left. And then on the right, it basically have your different modes. So you have comfort, sport, sport plus and race. But because this doesn't have 1500 kilometers yet, it is not in break in mode. There's no race. It's just simply sport plus. Yes. And it does have the suede steering wheel and leather on the top. There is no center ring in the middle. So I don't know if I'm going straight because you know, you need that apparently, but there's carbon fiber everywhere. It's got the Burstmeister sound system. It's got vented seats. I saw that you couldn't get vented seats in the E53, but that is a lie. You can get it right here. I see it. I can push it. You've got heated seats, three increments and air conditioning seats, three increments. You obviously do have memory seat, three increments of memory seat or three modes of memory seat. You obviously have all your fold in mirrors, your automatic lights, automatic wipers, all that good stuff. Again, I'm not a huge fan of Mercedes Benz having the shifter up here to reverse neutral and drive and park. I'd prefer it down here, but I understand because all this stuff is done through your finger. You can slide left and right on this 12.3 inch screen and you have two of them and they're sort of individual of sorts. They do sort of merge together, but you can get a lot of the data here that you can see right here in the screen. Most vehicles have everything you can do here. You can't really see on there besides the radio and stuff like that. But here you can adjust all your drive unit stuff 
in the middle. You can adjust different features, but I'll get into that in a second. Let's just talk about the rest of the stuff before we jump into the screens. Moving along here, if I want to shut the vents off, they have these little turny clicky buttons for the left two, and then for the right two here. The carbon fiber wraps around the front, and there's some piano black pieces, not too much of it, but around the venting, the two large venting on either side. So moving down here, you have your HVAC controls, which are Mercedes-Benz, pretty straightforward stuff. You've got your menu, you can push up and down, and it shows you on your big screen here, which is also touch screen. So you can touch this up and down, or you can simply use these little toggle buttons. So you have your physical hard buttons you can touch right down here. It's dual climate control left and right. And then you have your hard buttons underneath that for your telephone, nav, radio, media, and then car stuff, and of course, a favorite button. It's funny how they put the hazard lights all the way on the right and it's the same size and I'm glad that it's not this big huge hazard light button right in the middle because every car does that. I know for safety there obviously that's the first thing you see but it's red and it's a triangle and you can't exactly miss it. Underneath there, underneath here you have your wireless charger. You can put it in here. So the only complaint I have is the location of the wireless charger. They're kind of hard to get. So when you put it down here and you put a drink here, you can't exactly touch your phone. Now I know you're not supposed to touch your phone but if you need to take your phone out, you have to take the drinks out and then take your phone out and then put your drinks back in. It does have a USB-C and then a cigarette lighter voltage adapter right underneath that. And yeah, everything's pretty straightforward. I can pop these out and clean it. And then behind that, you have, again, all your adjustments for the suspension and the exhaust and the drive modes and stability program and the volume and pretty much everything you can do up here, you can also do down here with your finger. Uh, it is pretty close that I could just toggle it over here. I don't really have to use this, but Whatever you feel, I guess however tall you are or however you'd like to use the screen, you can use either or. And moving down here, you do have your two USBs in here and probably about the same size, maybe a hair bigger than the Jaguar. They're fairly tight, not a lot of room, not, not very deep. It's about this deep, not the deepest thing in the world. Last but not least is the seats. Now these seats do not have a full massage. They have something called kinetics. Now I'll get into that when I talk about this 12.3 inch screen because there's a lot of data about these seats in there. But it does have this little AMG piece here and I thought when I first saw it that they'd bother me, but I can't feel them at all. It does have, as I mentioned, ventilated and heated seats, but what does bother me is these headrests. Now, I would expect, like the Audis, the headrest does slide forwards and backwards, but they don't. Actually, when you push them upward, they do slide forward. So the higher you are, the more it pushes your neck, which is kind of odd. You would think that it has an adjustment to go straight up and then straight out, but it, it doesn't. So anyways, that's all I got to say about the seats. Let's jump into the screens. So jumping in the screen, you've got a few main menus like most other manufacturers. In this specific case, you've got your telephone, your nav, your radio, your media, your comfort, your AMG track pace, and your AMG performance, and then different apps, and then obviously your settings. But let's go right to the front again because I wanna talk about something called themes. Now you see on the bottom here it says themes. If I simply just push this themes up, I've got different themes. I have trip, lounge, standard, experience, racetrack, and then I could create a theme. They have different favorites like setup assistant, sound, display off, similar sounds, and create favorites. So you can do quite a few customizations to this screen, but let's take a deep dive into a few of the individual menus. So obviously there's phone, there's navigation. So let me show you how this navigation works. Now I've already taken a, a bit of a dive in the other Mercedes-Benz products we have, so we'll just sort of skim over some of this stuff. So let's talk about speed here. Look how fast this is compared to the Jag that I had a lot faster. So that's one quick thing, but look at the clarity. Like it's really nice, really fast can zoom out, zoom in, pretty awesome. Now, back to home, I hit the home button here, I move over to radio, hit radio, satellite radio, if I wanna zoom, if I wanna click other radio stations, I can simply just slide over. And this is something I really love. I love how fast we can use this carousel here to swing through different radio stations. And then next up, we've got media, fairly straightforward stuff, comfort, which is important to know because of these seats. So we've got seat kinetic, so I'll show you what it says here. So seat connects, you have your back and seat surface, your backrest, your seat surface, and how long you want the duration to run. So I talked about seat net kinetics in the other Benzes. What it essentially does is it essentially just moves different seating positions to make you move a little bit more and let you stretch, stretch those muscles out. So seat heating balance, important. You can actually put where you want the seat heat to go. Pretty cool to do all this kind of stuff. It's really important, I always find, for my wife because she's always freezing cold and I'm always boiling hot. And then you have your ambient lighting, which is always important in a Benz because check this out. And then you have different effects. You've got welcome, climate, track, pace, and then those are your individual colors if you decide to pick them. Color flash, color mix. So kind of cool, they allow you to adjust all these different settings. Next up is track pace, and as you can see, track pace right there, drag race, telemetry, and options. So track race, I can basically pick different tracks that I wanna drive on, and obviously there's no tracks in where I live. Next up is drag racing, and you can basically have it set like this. 
here it is, three, two, one, and boom, off you go. And it measures and calculates all your time. Pretty awesome. Telemetry just shows you all the bar graphs and the data, and then again, options. Pretty cool to have it built into the car. But that's on a track. What happens on regular street? Well, here you go. This is all the data that you have because this is an AMG. So you have all your G-force meters over here where the power is being sent to, your brake percentage in terms of your acceleration and stuff like that, and then different versions of it. So you can see how it shows and then you can have it in a full screen. So kind of cool, it lets you have all this stuff in the vehicle. Then next up is engine. Engine shows you all your performance up to 500 horsepower. Obviously this doesn't have 500 horsepower. It's close, but it doesn't have 500 horsepower because it only has 21 horsepower with this electric motor. And then look at this side. It's kind of cool that the torque shows you this way up to 350 and then your gear temperature and then your oil temperature here. And the next up is consumption. We don't really care about that. Next up is dynamic select, which is individual configuration where you can set up different pieces. So it's very customizable, as I mentioned, and then back to the main homepage. And then you have your apps and then settings. So let's go into settings and see what's in there. So you've got your quick access, your assistance stuff. So it's got Parktronic, your camera and your parking. I find that it does a really good job with all the sensors around the car. It's very clean. The cameras work excellent. It's a very clean, nice big screen and you obviously can adjust your warning tones, your pitch, uh, those type of things. Anyways, those things are just kind of for individual people. Uh, active keeping lane assist, your active brake assist and then moving up is vehicle. So you can set your automatic seat adjustment based on how tall you are, your panel heating, which is pretty cool because look, at the end of the day, this does have heated armrest and heated center console. And you can adjust all that stuff right here. And you can have an acoustic lock, your belt adjustment. Some people don't really like the belt adjustment, but I do. When you get in the car, you adjust the belt, it tightens up for you, it's a nice piece. And then automatic door lock, automatic folding mirrors, trunk restriction, cast, you know, all that regular stuff that most of us are used to. Light, ambient lighting, again, I talked about that. Exterior lighting delay, interior lighting delay, and then moving up a system. So this is cool where you have your displays. Like look at the quality and the resolution of this screen. It is really, really clean. And luckily you guys are v watching this with a really good camera. We shoot these videos with a really good camera that you can see the clarity of this screen. We don't shoot with our iPhone around here. So there's a lot to take in on this video game of a dash because there's so much going on. So clean, so many colors. My eyes just don't know where to start or where to end. But if we talk about how this display works. It's totally individual than the one on the right side as I mentioned. If you look at these little dots here, I can kind of slide. I can slide this over and then there's my radio stations, my route schedule. I have all this data on the left and then I can just simply pivot back to the right very gently and then there we go. I have the same sort of thing. I can adjust different data points on this screen. That's pretty cool. You kind of take some time to kind of get used to it. I know they say that about all cars, but this one takes a little bit more time because like how particular are you about having all this data? I guess that's the most important part. But if it were me, I would just probably leave it like this. I would leave the navigation on the right. In the middle, I would probably leave it with maybe the boost or probably the speedometer. Just not this speedometer looks kind of weird. I prefer the other speedometers. And then over there's your another speedometer. So I would probably leave this, yeah. Who knows? Very confusing and who knows what to pick. But all I know is that you can adjust all this stuff here because I can simply just press this home button and then I get everything I want to know right there. So all the stuff I talked about in the, in, in the middle screen you have here, your assistance, your phone, your navigation, your AMG performance, your trip, your radio, your media, and then your design and displays. And of course, the big one, service. So the design and displays is important to know. So we have classic, sport, and check understated. It just minimizes everything on this screen right there. That is probably what I would rock with. I really like that. It's very clean and nice until, of course, you're in performance mode and then you're thinking, man, let's change this up and give me something a bit more fancy like Super Sport or Sport. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, there we go. Just, just so dead. They're so, these colors are so deep. That, my, that sees past my eyes. And check out this EQ charge. That is pretty cool to see because actually there's an electric component I talked about. And forget all the talking, let's take this thing for a drive and see how it handles on the road. Oh my God. <laughs> this doesn't feel like an E-Class. Now, people want to ask me about suspension and steering. So this is suspension, yes, in Sport Plus, it is a little bit more firm, but watch my hand and the steering. There is still some delay. It's not as direct as you would like to think 
considering that we're in a full out potential AMG product. Now there's questions about if this is a full AMG. I would say yes it is. Maybe the steering can be a tad bit sharper, but then I think you'd probably give up on the feeling because this is a bumpy road again and that camera normally shakes like crazy and it's not. How are the brakes? They're good. How's the downshifting? Pretty awesome. Second gear is the only gear I can actually hear the turbos. Oh yeah, that sounds cool. Now when we think about suspension, we think about like lumpy and we think Cadillac, I mean, not the new Cadillac CT5 V Blackwing, but we think like Bodhi Cadillac or Bodhi S-Class, but this is air suspension, air suspension all the way. So here's a change that AMG have done. They've actually lowered the steering column for short guys like me, because now I don't have to hold the steering wheel like a bus. Now it's a very thick steering wheel, but in addition, it is lower. Oh man, this, this is pretty nice and tossable. Oh. I just love hearing that turbo. <laughs> and the pops and on the throttle. Let's shift at 45 on RPM. There we go. So my opinion about the 53 versus the 63, see the 53 is lighter. Yes, it does have a six. It is twin turbo six. It's not the V8 that people want to hear, the growl and all that fun stuff. But the eight is heavy. People don't think that. The 53 is lighter. It's more tossable. There's definitely more like more nimbleness to it than the 63. So there is some value there for somebody that wants a lighter sort of car. And when I drove this for the first time, I felt like this was like kind of like the Audi S4. I always felt the Audi S4 was one of the best all around cars that you could buy. It was just good at everything. It wasn't like totally peaking in every certain, any specific thing, but overall it was pretty awesome. And that's what this gives me. It feels like everything around this car is done very well. There's a ton of tech. This is definitely a better car than an Audi S4. It is more money, but it's definitely a better car. The tech is a million times better. This sort of appeals to everybody along any range and against any age group. Any age group will get in this car and be like, this is amazing tech. Anybody older will say this is a spacious car that has great suspension. It looks really good. I feel, I feel like I spent my money on something that's worthwhile. Now, a quick note. Now, a quick note for anybody that wants to buy a used one. What you should do now is if you're gonna buy one in two or three years, hypothetically, then you should go to a dealer now and get an order guide. So then you have the list of options because there are so many options you can buy on pretty much most German cars and this E-Class is no different. So if you're looking to buy one in two years, go now to a dealer, get the option list because when you look at one two years from now and you see the price is kind of all over the map, it's because the options are heavy. You can get one as low as 80-ish and as high as 120-ish. So there we go, $30,000 in options. So when you go through that list, you need to know, hey, what am I getting exactly? So I literally just reviewed this Jaguar XF and that thing had no personality and no life to it. And this thing has all of it, has the life, has the personality, has the fun, has the looks, has all the tech you need, has all the nightclub lights that we'd ever need. And yeah, it just puts a smile on your face. So we don't really talk about price on this channel because I figure if you're gonna look at what these cars are, you obviously know what they cost that's probably wrong I should actually talk about cost and this costs 90 grand Canadian plus options but this is what I think I think sales guys do this they sort of avoid this car and go probably straight to 63 instead of talking about the 53 because you should talk about the 53 because it is lighter it gives you all the same stuff and you probably save around 25 grand so hey there's something for you. It's more tossable, it doesn't feel as heavy, and with gas prices now, I'd probably buy the 53 over the 63 because it gives you enough of a sound. Like, listen. If you want more than that, well, spend your money on the 63. But I feel confident, content with something like this. It is, yes, not the big boy. So maybe there's a big argument of somebody spending money on the 450, the E450. I would buy an E350 and not an E450 because I feel like that's just not big enough of a gap for me. The 53, though, should be there. And get rid of the 40, the 450. That's my opinion. Get rid of the E450, keep the E53, keep the E63, keep the E350. 450, see you later. So you wanna know what the problem is? The problem is this, when you go into a Benz dealer, that salesperson is gonna actually skip the 53 and go straight to the 63 and say, this is what you gotta buy, this is crazy, this is amazing, this is where you gotta put all your efforts. Meanwhile, his efforts should really be on the 53 and then make the 63 an aspirational product. 
For me, I think the E450 is a waste. They should make the E350 and then go to a E53 and then the E63 because this thing is light. This thing does, as I said, appeal to all types of people, not just a gas guzzling E63, which is a crazy beast for sure. There's no doubt, sounds crazy, but this thing does actually have its benefits. It does pop pretty well. It does drive very smoothly. And yes, you will save a ton of money, call it 25-ish grand over the 63. So this makes sense having. This is the middle child I don't mind keeping. It's the other one, the 450, that makes no sense to me. E350, E53, E63, that's it. That's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. I hope you guys like this video, and if you do, make sure you don't subscribe, because only 5% of you listen. Can you believe 95% of people that watch our videos don't subscribe, but then our views keep going up? Crazy. Thanks for watching.